And with that, we turn to the man who held so much power when this program began, former Vice President Dick Cheney. Thank you for joining us. Morning, Mr. George. Vice President. So we, we just heard uh, Secretary Clinton right there said it's uh, important to go up to the line, but not over the line. Did this program go over the line? Uh, George, I wouldn't. It's been five years since I was involved in, in uh, classified information, and uh, I wouldn't want to discuss it, uh, anything that I was involved in or that I had knowledge of in the past. That would be totally inappropriate for me. But, but can you say generally whether this program was valuable or not? Well, I can say that the, the um, capability of the United States government on a broad basis um, to uh, collect intelligence that's important to the United States, saving lives, etc. Uh, it's nothing new um, without talking about specific details, which I'm not, or specific uh, targets. It's something that we've been involved in for a long time. And um, the, uh, I think the, the unfortunate aspect of it is that um, Mr. Snowden has, uh, in fact, divulged a lot of information which is damaging to the United States. And, and, and once the information is revealed, are we at the point now where the program is creating more harm than benefit? Uh, I can't say that. Uh, again, George, I've been out of the loop, so to speak. Uh, all I know is what I read in the newspapers and hear you guys talk about on Sunday. I, uh, so I'm, I'm not current on uh, the current status of the program. I was when I was uh, in the White House and also when I was Secretary of Defense, uh, a consumer of intelligence uh, from all around the world. And, and it was important that we collect it, and uh, it was so important you're saying bottom, the conduct of our policies. Bottom line, without revealing the details of the classified information, this was a valuable program? I am not talking about a specific program. I'm talking about our overall intelligence capabilities are important to the security of this nation and need to be preserved. We're also facing a uh, critical negotiations right now with Iran mm -hmm. over their nuclear program. We're deeply involved with that as well. And uh, there's about to be a showdown with Congress over that. Congress prepared to vote the Senate as early as next week on more sanctions, tougher sanctions for Iran. The chief United States negotiator, Wendy Sherman, came out this week and said, no, she wants a pause in sanctions. We think that this is a time for a pause uh, to see if these negotiations can gain traction. The Congress has its prerogatives. We don't get to control Congress. How would you advise Congress to respond? I think uh, I don't have a lot of confidence in the administration to be able to negotiate an agreement. Uh, I think sanctions uh, offer some prospect of bringing the Iranians around. Uh, I talked to my friends in that part of the region. I still know them, a lot of them, and they're very fearful that the whole Iranian exercise is going to go the same way as the Syrian exercise. That is, that there'll be bold talk from the administration, but in the final analysis, nothing effective will be done about the Iranian program. But right now, what we're seeing today, in fact, in Syria, is the chemical weapons are being cataloged. The inspectors are, are in there uh, finding out and putting a stop to the program. Well, we'll, we'll see. I'm a skeptic, uh, I think, like a lot of other people are. And I know that our friends in the region are worried uh, if you look at the piece, there's a front page story in the New York Times today about how the, the administration has had a review of Mideast policy and is continuing to, quote, pivot to Asia and downsize uh, the importance of the significance of uh, that part of the world to U.S. policy. One of the things they're doing is backing away from the so-called democracy agenda that was mm -hmm. uh, propagated by President Bush in your uh, administration. But you weren't, um, it seemed, a big fan of that. Do you think it's right to scale it back? Well, I think the the... The U.S. presence in the Middle East was enormously important now for decades. It went all the way back, certainly before Desert Storm. Uh, I think that presence and that capability and that influence has been significantly diminished as we've withdrawn from the region. We've cut the number of forces we have in the region. I think our, our uh, friends no longer count on us, no longer trust us, and our adversaries don't fear us. That was sort of the cornerstone and the basis of U.S. ability to influence. If we're not heavily involved there, if we've turned our back on the region, if we've had a president who believes we overreacted to the terrorism attacks on 9-11, I think uh, the Saudis, the Emiratis, uh, the Egyptians, uh, many in that part of the world no longer have confidence in the United States. You've said that you advised President Bush to take out Syria's nuclear I did. reactor. He didn't. Israel did. Did you think your administration should have taken military action against Iran's nuclear program? I thought it would be uh, important if we took out the Syrian reactor that it would send a very important signal to the Iranian program. That uh, we'd draw on a red line, uh, we'd said to North Korea, don't proliferate after their first test. They clearly proliferated and we didn't do anything about it.
And if we had taken out the Syrian reactor the way the Israelis did, and they wanted us to do it, we would have sent a clear signal about proliferation. We would have given substance and meaning to our diplomacy. The Iranians would have to look at that and say, these guys are, are serious about it. They mean business. And we'd be much more effective today negotiating with the Iranians if we'd taken out that Syrian reactor seven years ago. Is military action against Iran inevitable? I have trouble seeing how we're going to achieve our objective uh, short of that. Uh, and I doubt very much that the diplomacy will be effective if there is not the prospect that if diplomacy fails that we will in fact resort to military force. Let's turn to politics. There's a lot of debate about what's going to take for the uh, Republicans to win back mm -hmm. uh, the White House. A and our latest poll at ABC News Washington Post shows how deep the hole is for the Republican Party. Worst numbers in a generation. One telling one I want to put up on the screen right now. Uh, Americans are asked who's doing what's best for the country versus what's best for, the, for their own political interests. Only 20 percent believe Republicans doing what's best for the country. 52 percent for President Obama. The, uh, the brand is at its lowest numbers ever in polling. Does that worry you? I know you didn't worry about your personal poll numbers, but for the party, does that worry you? And, and how should they fix it? Well, I think we've got a, a long way to go, obviously, to rebuild the party. I think it's very important that we bring in a new generation of leadership. Um, I think uh, uh, after the uh, presidential election last year, uh, you know, we got whipped. Uh, a lot of us thought we were going to pull it out, uh, and, and that didn't happen. And we clearly need to spend time and effort on uh, building the base, building the party, um, making it a full-time professional operation in terms of the RNC. There's a lot of work to be done, no question about it. Part of that new generation, your daughter Liz, running for Senate. She is indeed. In, in, in Wyoming, has rankled a lot of feathers mm -hmm. uh, in Washington. Uh, most of the Republican senators supporting the incumbent, Mike Enzi. Mm -hmm. He himself said this week that he felt a bit blindsided by your whole family, he said he thought you were uh, his, his friend. How do you respond to that well, criticism? Mike also said he and I are fishing buddies, which is simply not true. Never happened. Uh, the fact of the matter is Washington is not going to elect the next senator from Wyoming. The people of Wyoming will elect that senator. Mike has a record, uh, if you go back and review his finances, uh, of getting about 84 percent of his campaign funds from Washington-based PACs. That's more than any senator of either party. He doesn't get much money from Wyoming. Uh, in the quarter just reported, Liz got 25 percent of her funds from Wyoming. He got 13 percent of his from Wyoming. Uh, she outraged him in the last quarter, over a million dollars in the first quarter out there. So I think it's, it's a great campaign. She's going full speed. She's going to win. And Washington isn't going to decide who's the next senator from Wyoming. Wyoming is. Far behind right now. It's just started. Let me, broader, you've also said that your, your daughter and others represent this new generation. And what, one of the things they're going to do is energize the base. But is that really the problem the Republican Party has right now? The presidents you worked for were pretty successful in reaching out beyond the base, persuading people who weren't voting for Republicans to vote for them. Isn't that what the party has to do? We need to do, we need to do it all. They, they can't say, well, we're going to write off that group or we'll write off that segment. Um, we've got to have first-class candidates. I think we're making progress. I think Reince Priebus is doing basically good work in terms of trying to change the rules, to move up the convention date, to shorten the primary time, um, and uh, put in, in the field a full-time paid staff as uh, the Obama people have over the years. So you see anybody no out there who can bring back do. some Democrats and independents to the Republican Oh, party? I think so. I'm, I'm not going to predict at this point or endorse anybody. Uh, we've got a long way to go to the next presidential election. But um, we've been there before. It's not the first time uh, we've had to go down uh, this road. And, and uh, it's basically, I think, healthy for the party to, you know, to be brought up short and say, OK, now it's time to go to work, and we need to look to our, our basic strategy, our personnel. And, and as I say, I feel very strongly about it's time to get a, a new generation involved. Well, you're looking healthy, too, and we're looking forward to talking to you later in the program about your new heart and the book.